It's 10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. That means it's time for Tom and Shane uh, know all about business. Tom Eagle off the morning mayor, AM 1450, KMS in Bozeman, Montana. Shane Matobin, my co-host, half man, half amazing. He's in Vancouver, British Columbia. And, um, well, today uh, we've got to talk about, Shane, we've got to talk about how to advertise your small business when a business card is all you have. And, um, boy, that, uh, that's going to be a great topic. But before we get to that, don't forget, hey, subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Click that notification bell so you'll never miss another podcast. And also, uh, there are great benefits to become a sponsor of the show. If you're uh, on Patreon, by all means, uh, you can sponsor um, uh, you could be a sponsor of our show, and we would greatly appreciate that very much. And there are a lot of benefits for doing that. So by all means, uh, get on uh, the uh, description below on YouTube and uh, check that out. All right. Uh, Shane's having some uh, technical issues uh, coming and going. He's back. <laughs> there you are again. I'm glad to have you back, man. How's it going? Yeah. Google seems to want to disenfranchise me. They're asking for money. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe you should take a break and pay them. <laughs> Not then, boy. All right. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right. Well, let's see. Um, we want to jump into uh, this uh, fairly quickly here. So uh, we'll get um, we'll get rocking and rolling. Um the uh, business card, the great thing about business cards, um, if you're a small business or if you're a new business, if you're a home-based business, uh, you really need a business card to be legitimate. And that's what we want to talk about today. Not only, uh, not only uh, the design of the business card, we want to talk about business card design, but also how to use it. So, uh, Shane, you've uh, done a bunch of businesses like I have. Uh, uh, business card, got to have it. Oh, absolutely. I was at a white, uh, white, uh, number two business card, standard size with raised black print. And, uh, you know, the important thing about it is to inform people, which we'll talk about and to remind people. So if they carry it with them and then of course networking because uh, i had huge success with it in businesses that i was involved with uh, particularly the restaurant business so yeah it's just, it it was a fantastic tool for me to use and the great benefit is to uh, utilize it if you're in a commercial business of your own and you can write a personal note on the back and initial it with maybe a discount on it to get to mm -hmm. you know to enhance uh, the customer to come in your place of business. And uh, that always worked out well for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we, uh, that's what we kind of want to talk about uh, in case you, um, in case you don't know, uh, a, a standard business card is uh, three and a half inches. Uh, that's 89 centimeters for those of you who are out of uh, America and across the top, it's two inches um, or down the side, I should say uh, two inches down the side, 51 centimeters. So you got seven square inches to tell your company story. And, um, you know, we want to talk about the specific things that you uh, may want to put on your business card. So um, by all means, um, there's there's several things that uh, you should do uh, with it. Um, if you take your business card and you hold it in front of you at arm's length, that's about what you see when you're driving down the highway and see a billboard. So it's about the same same size if you stick it out there and, yeah. uh, and look at it. So that'll give you some idea maybe of uh, of the size uh, that you can uh, tell your story on. So so um, that's what we want to that's what we want to talk about this morning is uh, the things that maybe you should have or should not have uh, on your on your business card. Uh, let's start with a logo. Shane, did you have a logo on your card? No, I I don't, or I've never really felt uh, necessary. But again, other than you know, company cards of people I work for, if they had a logo, they usually provided the business cards, so they, they would have their logo on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it 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 varies uh, whether whether you need a logo or not is um, 
you know, is, is a whole nother, a whole nother story. Um, our, uh, our particular logo looks like this. Uh, it's just our name. Uh, so Tom and Shane.com and we've got the uh, things on there. So uh, that's our, that's our company logo there. So it can be your name. Johnson and Johnson uh, is uh, their name. Um, they just, the typeface makes it distinctive. Um, whether or not you need a logo or not uh, depends on, I guess, the type of business or the image you're trying to project. Um, the other thing that you got to think about your logo is that your logo is going to be used in a bunch of different sizes. Um, newspaper ad, maybe on a magazine, on the business card, on TV. So uh, a, bit, uh, uh, a logo that looks good in the newspaper may look great, but when you shrink it down on a business card, it's illegible. So very important to uh, think about that. That's right. And another uh, one thing that's become very popular since the 90s, particularly in the real estate industry is for people to put their picture on, uh, you know, on the, their business card, which mm -hmm. probably may be a value to help, you, you know, the mind remember who gave it to you. And, and, uh, and so in, in that regard, it's, it's good. And, and also then they take the, the concept of that and you've seen it all over, I'm sure in Bozeman and they put it on, uh, you know, bus stop ch chairs, you know, as an ad mm -hmm. or, you know, in a, in a rain, a rain, rain covered area at a bus stop, you know, a poster ad. And in some ways that works out well, but it, it's a very expensive process. So unless you're a top dog in, in the game you're playing, it's a, it's a cost. Well, you can write it off as an expense, um, but it's a heavy one to maintain. True. Well, and also, too, uh, while it is common for uh, real estate folks to have their picture on uh, the business card, uh, it's probably not a good idea if you're an attorney, an accountant, or some kind of professional person. Usually, uh, that that doesn't uh, doesn't uh, you know isn't isn't really necessary. Um, so you know, it's up to you as the type of thing that you have. Um, some people, uh, construction uh, businesses, for example, might have a construction website uh, or a construction picture uh, faded on their as a background on their on their uh, business card, and then the uh, information is uh, pr imprinted on the front. So, um, yeah, it's what it comes down to is what image are you projecting? What image are you showing the customer? What are you What are you talking about here with the uh, what does your business card really say? It reflects on you as to uh, who you are and what you are. And the type of card that you uh, pick uh, can can either be a card that people keep and refer to often or, um, you know, dispose because, well, it looks like a cheap card. So maybe there's a, a cheap business attached to it. Yes, file thirteen. It gets thrown in the basket. Yeah, that 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 does does happen. But the interesting thing about it, from my standpoint, is I always found the benefit of it was to uh, develop networking. Um, business cards today even are very inexpensive. Uh, you know, for five hundred on several websites, you can pay as little as five bucks, and uh, it's pretty well standardized stuff. And and as you mentioned. Uh, the print on it's important, and of course, uh, the the important information that people need to know about you and and uh, what you represent as far as a business. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. Yeah, the um, the well, and you you bring up an excellent uh, excellent point, Shane, because um, one of the things we should uh, talk about briefly are uh, the things that should be on a business card. Obviously, your company name. Uh, your name, the uh, business address. Uh, if you're home-based business, you probably may not want your uh, address on uh, your business card yet. Uh, if you're operating out of your home, depends on what kind of business you have and if you're comfortable putting your address on a business card. Uh, phone number, email, uh, website, fax, uh, cell phone, home phone, company logo, business slogan, motto or uh, brand names or things like that. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you fill up a business card pretty quickly 
But um, don't, uh, you know, one of the things in print ads that uh, I often discourage people from doing is uh, uh, making the phone numbers too big. Um, they'll find your phone number on your card. You, know, you don't need to make it. Right. You don't need to have a giant phone number. And I, I always I always put my full name on it, Kelly Shane Montalban. And the reason is is that uh, very few people use their middle name as their uh, normal day name, and um, I I do. So it's a it's a great uh, heads up because if people do call you and they refer to you by your first name, in my case, Kelly, you know that it's not somebody that knows you personally, but uh, they are calling. So for me, it was a, a an, an instant uh, advantage when I got the call as to whether the person was calling, you know, uh, uh, with making a personal call uh, or with just calling to get information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be right. Yeah. Um, the other thing um, I, I suggest, uh, you know, go to a print shop and uh, have them show you a sample of business cards they've done. Or uh, sometimes I know when I go get my uh, oil changed um, at a local business here, they have a bulletin board with business cards all over it. Um, you know, everything from construction to cleaning houses to whatever it is. And look on there and see what, what cards attract your attention, what colors, what uh, designs, um, what logos, things like that. Um, what is it that really attracts your attention to, uh, uh, to see the, um, you know, a card that stands out, it might be a color. It might be the colors used on the card. It might be the paper uh, color, it might be the uh, typeface itself. Uh, there's a bunch of things uh, that, um, you know, that stand out uh, when you see them all spread out together. So uh, that's a great way to kind of figure out what you, you know, what you want to, what you want to project in your business. That's right. And if you have a, a, a handy saying or that you've developed or a short saying of three or four words that you've developed with regards to your business, uh, you know, to, as a reminder, you might put that on, you know, towards the bottom of the card, just to reference people and their memory um, as to uh, your business. And, uh, you know, and as Tom had pointed out, an, uh, an informed expression of what you represent. Yeah, exactly. Next, we want to talk about what's your business worth? Um, you know, as Shane mentioned, you can get business cards for five bucks online. Uh, generally, those are those are the bottom of the barrel business cards. Um, you know, if you if you've ever gone to an online uh, printer, uh, they will start you out with a five dollar card. And then if you want, as Shane talked about earlier, if you want raised print, which is a little nicer, uh, if you want a uh, slick finish on the card or a linen card, um, those are going to be more pricey. But when it comes right down to you, uh, what if you paid a hundred bucks a thousand for your business cards? That's a dime. That's a dime per card, Shane. Uh, <laughs> is your business worth a dime <laughs> to get a to get a well made business card that really shows uh, your image in a positive way well i've had business cards since i was uh, eight years old so i've gotten to know you know what the look is and how it how it works out um <laughs> with the, depending on the business that you have uh if i wanted a thousand cards i'd i would buy the lesser and to, because i'd use those to to network with and then i would have a, a the glossy raised black print you know, as a personal card. Again, um, a, another marketing tool to know uh, which type of uh, individual um, commenting uh, about your business uh, or meeting you and, and even showing you and say, oh, I, I saw this card. And then, you know, which type of card it was, whether it was something you gave out personally or was something that you spread around for networking purposes. Yeah, yeah. Um before we move on, uh, we need to tell you, um, hey, would you like to make uh, videos like this for YouTube or Facebook Live? Uh, Shane and I use StreamYard to do that with, and uh, we're present. Uh, we're happy to have them uh, on board with us. And uh, 
we would suggest that you take a look at what they uh, do. There's all kinds of things that uh, we can do. Obviously, we put this up. We put this up. Uh, we can put a screenshot up. We put our title up. We can put our logo up. All of these things are possible with StreamYard, and uh, they have a free version you can test out and uh, check it out and see if it's something that you want, and uh, you'll find the description for that in the uh, description or in our description below on our Facebook or uh, YouTube page, I should say. <laughs> so check it out on our uh, YouTube page. Well, let's talk about the uh, right and uh, the right way to advertise with a business card. Uh, uh, there was a gentleman years ago in Detroit. Uh, his name was, uh, what was his name, Shane? <laughs> Joe Gerard. Joe Gerard. Joe Girard. Yeah, I'll get it in a minute. Uh, yeah, Joe holds the Guinness Book of World's Records for selling 1,200 new cars um, uh, in a year. Now, that's 100 cars a day, Shane. 100 cars a day. That's pretty good sales uh, <laughs> record there. But as Shane was talking about, having some inexpensive business card, Joe would go to football games, and whenever the team scored, he would throw a handful of business cards down on the uh, expensive seats below uh, with a discount uh, for a car on the cards. And uh, he would uh, go back, and uh, uh, people were coming in and asking for him right and left because they got his card at the uh, thing with this discount on it, and uh, he would... He would uh, initially just sell the car and then pass the people off to the finance people to get the rest of it done. And then he would be on to a new customer. So think about that. A hundred cars a month. I mean, that's, that's three a day. <laughs> yeah. I remember going to the NFL uh, games that I went to in my life. And back in the day, back in the eighties and nineties, it was really quite fascinating because people would uh, throw a lot of uh, confetti. Uh, the big mm -hmm. one was the, uh, uh, the uh, window that, that would be cut out, uh, you know, for envelopes. And uh, people would go and, and to the printer and, you know, buy a box of those because they would, they would save them. And they, people would bring them to the games to use as confetti. So cards would work great because they would float and they'd mm -hmm. flutter. And, you know, it, it creates a, a great view from anywhere mm -hmm. you're sitting in the stadium. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you wouldn't, I don't think you'd damage anybody unless they have to be, happen to be looking up at the time, but you know, they're not going to bang anybody's head too hard or anything like anything like that. Uh, another thing that I always did, anytime I went to a restaurant, I would always leave my business card on the table. Um, just a no brainer uh, there. Uh, also, uh, I know a lot of people b uh, pay bills online, um, depending on the type of business you had. Now, in my case, with my business, uh, it was uh, people wanting to start a business, uh, buying my books, doing a seminar, whatever. Uh, so I put a business card in every bill I paid. So I didn't buy, I didn't pay for things online. Uh, I would mail the check to the credit card company. I'd mail it to the bank or to the water company, the electric company, whatever, because I had the feeling that the person who opened that bill might like to start their own business and may not like working at the electric company or the water company or the credit card company. And um, they would be directed to my website and uh, maybe buy my book and, uh, uh, I've got a new business owner uh, running around the uh, country uh, making the economy great. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to distribute your card uh, to folks. Uh, what was, how did you do it, Shane? Uh, I know you, you've never met a stranger, I don't think. You meet people very easily. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, you walk up to anybody out there, hi, how you doing? What's going on? <laughs> so, how did you do when I moved to Toronto, I took over the largest nightclub in in Canada in Toronto, downtown Toronto. It was at the uh, Summer Hill and Young um, Subway Station. It was an entire city block. We had five separated nightclubs in there, one including a dinner theater, another largest disco in the city that held 1,200 people. And it was a white elephant. They, they couldn't do anything with it. 
Um, I changed the shows, uh, traveled to New York a couple of times for off-Broadway shows that I brought back. And um, I figured the best draw was to work on the, uh, uh, the, the uh, disco club, you know. Uh, and so what I did is I went down Young Street, and for about uh, four weeks after I started there, I, I literally went through every building, every floor, and um, I gave uh, free passes to the receptionist for her to give away to her friends with a free drink on the back. And then an additional, well, depending on how many people are in the office, she would tell me because I did that. You know, and she'd say, oh, well, we have 24 or 50 different lawyers. And I said, well, would you mind making sure you make sure they get one? And, of course, she, she did. And on the back of their cards, um, I had call for reservations. So anyone that called me, I'd reserve a, a, a space. So I went to principally three firms. I went to accounting firms, legal firms and marketing firms and uh, was hugely successful because they all felt they had an in very difficult uh, particularly on weekends to get into a nightclub obviously but with my card you are guaranteed a reserved table so uh, worked out really well and within mm -hmm. no 45 days we went from having maybe two three hundred people on a saturday night to uh, 1400 paying 20 bucks a person cash to get in so yeah worked out really well but that yeah. just getting on the uh, pavement walking and networking um with your own time you can do it in the neighborhood you know i suggest uh, anywhere within a mile of your business if, if you have a brick and mortar business uh, you should get out and get to know the neighborhood and meet people and and just slide your business card that in the front door um you know on the edging of the front door it, it is a very convenient and great way to network and market your business. Yeah. Yeah. And you get some, good exercise. Uh, that's true too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A few of our uh, favorite uh, advertising tips for business cards, and Shane just mentioned one of them. Uh, I've always been the um, uh, proponent that uh, everyone within walking distance of your home should have your business card. Uh, people like to deal with their neighbors. They like to deal with deal with people who are in the same situation they are. You're paying the same taxes. You're paying the same uh, utilities and all of that. You're uh, you know you want a safe neighborhood. You all have you have common interests, and uh, people I think are are happy to support people who live in their you know in their particular neighborhood. So. Um, yeah, everybody uh, within walking distance of your home, and Shane points out it's excellent exercise. Get out there on a, you know, uh, maybe a Saturday or something, uh, you know, midday or mid afternoon or something like that, and you know, just go knock on doors. Hey, I live down on the corner. Uh, you know, I love your business. Here's what I do. If I can be of help to you, by all means, give me a call. So uh, yeah, it works yeah, out. Uh, that, you know. there, there's a great way of of this that work, has worked. Oh, for 20, 30, 40 years now, whenever you get uh, takeout at your favorite Chinese restaurant, they always staple a uh, menu to it. So, mm -hmm. you know, you always have an updated menu or you have an extra menu because someone might ask you, you know, you know where, what Chinese food do you like? And you hand them the, the menu and great way to take it, have it at home and pick out your favorite dishes, you know, to try different ones and score them. And then, you know, what to order whenever you call. But uh, th this is also a great way for restaurants to network when you're walking uh, within a mile of, of your restaurant and again get a little small takeout copy of your menu and use it to either put in the mailbox or in the door um, uh, of your neighbors or people that live as Tom says within a mile of your business or your home so yeah, yeah that, it's it's just yeah. a tr terrific marketing tool because people will pay attention to it yeah Bruce says, can't show you my flyer, but for my snow remo removal business, I put flyers on local uh, billboards. Uh, actually, uh, says, don't hurt yourself shoveling snow. Uh, call someone to do it for you with a picture of a snowplow yeah. truck and uh, a Yeti driving it and in the bottom corner under my phone number, a uh, Yeti shoveling snow. Uh, yes, uh, I look like a Yeti in the wintertime. Uh, well, most of us do here in Montana. <laughs> I think so. No problem there. That's uh, that's for sure. Uh, the other thing, too, um, that we want to uh, talk about, too, is don't forget the, the back of the card. Uh, very important because, uh, um, 
you know, the back of your card, uh, you don't necessarily have to have it printed. What I would do uh, is get a rubber stamp made. And uh, in the case of Joe Girard, uh, just stamp the back of the cards with some kind of discount deal. And this works really well. You could, you could put a rubber stamp neighborhood discount. Uh, and when you walk from door to door, uh, you can give uh, give folks uh, in your neighborhood. You can give them uh, some kind of a, something of value uh, for knowing you and to keep your card. Um, you know, uh, any number of things you can put on the back of the card that will uh, uh, also increase your business. And it's very low cost advertising. Obviously, rubber stamps are very inexpensive. And you sit there at the kitchen table and stamp a bunch of cards and, um, you know, take off with them. And you're That's never right. without, it, you know. it, it, it's important, like Tom has pointed out. So, well, you know, don't waste the space. It, utilize that space. And um, I've always had great success by doing it by hand. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that it'd be wrong to use a stamp, but a personal note on the back, uh, you know, that you write down and, and uh, initial, you know, it, it's something special. You know, people like to get those types of things. Yeah. The other thing uh, I want to stress to you, uh, uh, all employees should have business cards. I don't care if they're the janitor, uh, you know, up till the CEO. Uh, everybody in your business should have business cards. And you're saying, well, what is what is my delivery driver going to do with a bunch of business cards? Well, you give them out to your friends and uh, family and people you know. And if they bring uh, an employee business card in, that employee should get some kind of a finder's fee. They should get some kind of a bonus for bringing customers into your business. So don't don't uh, scrimp on the fact that, well, you know, gee whiz, uh, I got 10 employees, uh, you know, uh, 30 bucks a employee. Come on, what's your business worth? What, how are you getting, the, what are you spending to get the word out now? You know, maybe nothing. So by all means, uh, but make sure that you give the employee an incentive for giving those cards out. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. correct. And utilizing that space in back for them to, to sign mm -hmm. and, and even suggest they put their phone number on it to a friend that's call, you know, for a friend to call them to help get a reservation and, and get a good seat. You know, mm -hmm. your employee knows your business and you, they, they know where to see people if it's in the food business or, of course, uh, they know uh, what's what's on sale that week. And, yes, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a great utilization of a basic card that's standardized, doesn't need to have their name on it, it's just standardized card, and uh, hand them out to all of them to make use of with a reward at the end of the tunnel. Yep. Yeah, if there's... Uh... You know, if there's any way that you can uh, find a reason to give someone your card and, you know, it isn't a, it, I, I don't mean waste your cards. Don't, don't pass them out to, um, you know, people who aren't valid customers. I mean, don't, don't go down to the elementary school and pass them out. Uh, the cops will come and say, what are you doing, man? Uh, get out of, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> you know, but uh, I always, I always had a, a rule. Um, it's called the 50 butt rule. And the 50 butt rule says if there's more than 50 butts in a room, I'm in that room with them. <laughs> so whatever it is, whether it's a city council meeting, whether it's a seminar of some kind or, um, you know, uh, whatever it is, uh, if there's an opportunity in there to meet someone, give them a card and whatever, then uh, I'm going to be in there doing it. Uh, so, um, you know, passing your card out, uh, joining civic groups, uh, lions, rotary, elks, moose, uh, Kiwanis, whatever, and uh, meet those guys. Make sure they have your cards. Your spouse should have your cards. Uh, you should never leave home. <laughs> you can leave your American Express, but don't leave home without your business cards. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bruce says... Um, uh, I do the same thing for customers reference, uh, to paying job, uh, get uh, 10% off of their monthly invoice. Yeah. If you can get, uh, if you can get your customers involved in that, uh, by all means, um, absolutely. You gotta, you gotta do that. So, so yeah, that's, um, 
Yeah, that's one of the uh, probably the most important uh, part of this. So, so anyway, the last uh, word on business card advertising, uh, Shane, you got to have it. Got to have one. Got to do oh, it. Oh yeah, it's it's a, it's a hallmark of the 20th century. Uh, they actually started back in the uh, 17th century in the 1600s. They people in Europe had business cards uh, as a way to. Um, develop and network uh, their businesses. So it, it's a classic form of, of both advertising and informing customers who you are, where you are, and how to get there. Sometimes people put maps on the back so they, you know, show people mm -hmm. how to get to where you're located. So there's there's a lot of use mm -hmm. in a small space of seven square inches. Quite 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 unique. Yeah. Well, uh, I know uh, uh, several accountants uh, that I know put what you need to bring uh, uh, for the tax return, uh, you know, uh, W-2s and, uh, you know, it has a checklist of things you need to bring in to do your taxes for your business. And um, there's That's other... Uh, and the boxes, yeah. the boxes yeah. that your cards come in are quite useful because uh, the top is obviously the same size as the bottom. And when you take the top off and you open a desk or drawer where you keep your business cards, you flip the top over and you put the cards you get in there. Um, yeah. Some people I've met have had a three by three card knowing people do that. So when they stick it in that box, it's one inch higher than the other cards. So, you, you know, it, you, there's all kinds of really cool things you can do with a business card that are uh, yeah. unique in, in being able to network and unique in getting people to remember you. Yeah. Well, the other thing too, uh, you can get a fold over business card. It's like a mini brochure. So, um, you know, you got the front and the back and the inside tells your story uh, or um, use the rubber stamp idea somewhere on there, but uh, they aren't that much more expensive than regular business cards. So uh, check out a uh, foldable business card and uh, people may, people may hang on to that uh, longer. So, um, all right. So, all right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. Hey, don't forget our uh, business and political radio show. That's every Saturday, 8 to 11. Click listen now at KMMSAM.com. No need to uh, leave any information, no, not have to sign up for anything. All you do is uh, listen and uh, call us, text us, whatever. And, of course, if you missed any of our past shows, they're all at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast. You get the video, you get the audio. Uh, whatever there is there. Uh, so uh, be sure and uh, and get those. And um, say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed be happy to be safe, everyone. Uh, we very much appreciate the time you've taken to listen to us. We um, are certain that the information we've provided will help you and serve you well. Uh, live in the moment and live to work. You're having your own business is a great and unique experience in your lifetime. And come home happy to your family. Come through the front door every each and every day with a smile on your face. That's what they want to see when you come home to them. Amen to that. All right. Hey, don't forget uh, to subscribe to like us on YouTube. Uh, our Patreon is down in the description. Also, we're happy to uh, offer that to you. Don't forget, uh, if you want to make videos like this, try StreamYard.com. StreamYard.com. That's what we use, and it works uh, very effectively. And uh, we will live, leave you with these parting thoughts. If you're new to our YouTube channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below the video. Click the notification bell so you'll never miss another podcast. Like us and leave a comment. Tom and Shane are now on Patreon. You can become a supporter of the show for as little as $3 per month. Or if you go higher, there are some special perks only available to you. Your help keeps these small business podcasts coming. You'll find this Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next small business podcast.